Hey everyone, today we're diving into the interesting topic Thracian warfare. The story of Thracian battles stretches all the way from the 10th century BC to the 1st century AD, covering a period where the Thracian tribes clashed with each other, as well as with their neighbors, across the Balkans. These weren't just small skirmishes, we're talking about large-scale wars that involved powerful kingdoms and tribal alliances. Now, let's talk about one of the most notable Thracian powers, the Odrysian Kingdom. This was a union of various Thracian tribes that came together under King Teres in the 5th century BC. The Odrysians were the first to really establish a stronghold in the region, and they got into conflicts with some big names, the Romans, the Greek colonies, the Kingdom of Macedon, and even the Persian Empire. But it wasn't just foreign nations they had to deal with, Sometimes, Thracians fought among themselves too. During the Peloponnesian War, for example, Thracians joined forces with Athens, fighting alongside the Athenians and Macedonians against the Spartans. Greek generals like Iphicrates and Charidemos even led Odrysian troops in battle. But it wasn't always smooth sailing. While the Odrysian kingdom was powerful, it was also prone to falling apart because of internal rivalries. Their army, though large, was often held together by the promise of plunder, which made long campaigns tough to sustain. One of the most famous leaders, Cytoses, managed to raise an army of 150,000 soldiers to invade Macedonia in 429 BC. But with winter closing in and the kingdom's fragile economy, they couldn't keep that force together for long. By the time the Odrysian kingdom declined, the Sapiens took control until Rome eventually absorbed Thrace, turning it into a Roman province by 46 AD. And now, when it came to troop types and how they organized their forces, Thrace had the potential to raise a massive army, though they didn't often gather such huge numbers. Thracians really valued their warriors above all else. Herodotus even mentioned that they despised any other kind of work. So, battle was their way of life. The bulk of Thracian infantry were peltasts, armed with javelins and lightweight crescent-shaped or round wicker shields called pelts. They relied heavily on missile weapons, but they were no strangers to close combat either. Some of their most feared weapons included the deadly Romphia, along with axes, clubs, bows, spears, and swords. The Sika, a short curved sword, became their signature weapon. Thracians avoided heavy armor, preferring to stay light and nimble in battle, which gave them a lot of mobility. They also had excellent horsemen who were known for their speed and agility. Thracian troops were fierce and they showed up in various conflicts, like the time 6,000 Thracian soldiers fought in the Persian campaign of Xerxes I. Even though they contributed to that campaign, they generally resisted Persian occupation. Some Thracian tribes, like the Triboli, even adopted equipment from the Scythians and Celts, blending styles to suit their own needs. They also had a unique tradition of tattooing their bodies, similar to the Dacians and Illyrians. In terms of tactics, Thracians were quick to adapt. Thucydides described how they would rapidly close ranks when attacked by Theban cavalry, using their speed and coordination to their advantage. There's even a story from Arian about how they used wagons as part of their battlefield strategy. When it came to cavalry, Thracians were known for their legendary horsemen. Some of their cavalry wore leather armor, but most didn't bother with armor at all, relying instead on their speed and skill. They wielded javelins, bows, and spears, and their formations were so effective that even Philip of Macedon adopted the famous wedge formation from them. The helmets used by Thracian warriors varied. Most commonly they wore Chalcidian helmets, but other types like Corinthian, Phrygian, and Scythian helmets were also seen. Armor was usually reserved for the nobility, and by the 4th century BC, you'd see some soldiers wearing leather or even iron armor, though that was still pretty rare. Thracians didn't just fight in their own armies either, they were highly sought after as mercenaries because of their ferocity. They were notorious for their love of plunder though, which sometimes made them expensive to hire. They fought for all sorts of foreign powers, including the Athenians, Spartans, and even the Persians. 
In Macedonian armies, they made up a large portion of both the cavalry and infantry, and later they became a key part of the Roman military. And now let's discuss about their fortifications and external influences. Although the Thracians only made one real attempt to build a city-state, they constructed many hill forts for protection and refuge. These fortified villages were simple but effective, as noted by Xenophon in his Anabesis. Roman historian Tacitus even wrote about a Roman assault on one of these hill forts, highlighting how common they were. Some of these forts were actually inhabited, and towns like Hellas and Kabyle became strongholds in their own right. Now let's talk about how other cultures influenced Thracian warfare. The Scythians, for instance, had a big impact. Thracians adopted their saddles and horse archer gear, even using the Scythian-style helmet, which was an open-faced bronze cap with leather flaps protecting the sides and back of the head. They also copied the Scythian cavalry wedge formation, which made their horsemen even more formidable. Even though the Odrysians were one of the most powerful Thracian tribes, they were still weaker than the Scythians, except during the reigns of kings Teres and Sitox. The northern Thracian tribe, the Gedi, were so similar to the Scythians that people often confused the two. Royal marriages and alliances were made between Thracians and Scythians, with the name Spartokos even shared between some Thracian and Crimean Scythian kings. Thracian warfare was also influenced by the Celts. The Triboli, a major Thracian tribe, adopted many Celtic weapons and equipment, including long swords. One weapon, the Sika, was famously known as the Thracian sword, though it didn't originate with them. It actually came from the Hallstatt culture, and the Thracians either adopted or inherited its use over time. Then, there was the Hellenic and Hellenistic influence. The Greeks had an early impact on Thracian warfare, introducing them to swords like the Xiphos, greaves, breastplates, and helmets. By the Hellenistic period, Greek armor and tactics were even more widely adopted. One interesting example is King Suves, who used a Greek tactic for a night march, though Thracians were already known for their love of night raids. Over time, Thracian kings were the first to be heavily influenced by Greek culture. As the Roman Empire expanded, Thracians living in Roman client states started to resemble Roman soldiers in their equipment and appearance. From 11 BC onwards, Thracians in places like Mysia and Dacia began to look more and more like Roman legionaries. Many Thracians in these regions also became Romanized over time. Despite all these external influences, the Thracians were still viewed by other civilizations as barbarians. The Greeks and Romans considered them fierce, warlike, and even savage. Plato grouped them with other high-spirited, warlike peoples like the Scythians and Celts. Thracians were notorious for their unpredictable nature in battle, often breaking truces and attacking at night. Some of their chieftains, like Digiles, were known for their extreme cruelty, and the Dai tribe committed some of the worst atrocities of the Peloponnesian War. Their ferocity on the battlefield was legendary, so much so that they would impale the heads of their enemies, like the Romans, on their spears after battle.